okay uh, so i will start off with the class <clears throat> okay so in the last class uh, we were studying about the incremental model uh, in the software uh, development life cycle models we were studying about the incremental development model and there we saw that successive versions is added and incrementally it is added first the module the core module is met then the non core modules are met so first suppose a is met it is made it is coded it is tested and then again b is made and then i am clubbing b with a again the whole uh, a with b is tested then i am clubbing c with a b c then again the whole a b c is tested so <coughs> so two very good advantages are there when it comes to incremental model the first advantage is the error reduction now it is very much obvious that if i am checking your copies and if i check your copy one time and suppose i give you some marks 10 and if i check it another time it may happen that few uh, steps where i haven't marked you i may think later that if i give you some dress marks it could be better so i will give you plus one marks so like this if you go on checking the things a lot of time so it's very much obvious that the chances of error is reduced to a great extent so the core modules since first the core modules are met and then the non core modules are made so core modules are those functionality modules which are necessity for the app or the service or the product the first necessity thing so since the core modules are used by the customer from the beginning and therefore these gets tested thoroughly so this will reduce the chance of errors in the core modules of the final product so the reliability of the software will be increased now second uh, advantage is incremental resource deployment what is that i will tell you okay so incremental uh, resource deployment what this means that suppose uh, the need for the customer to commit a uh, large resources at one go for the development of the system it is not there suppose the developing organization e that organization will save a large number of resources from deploying them a large manpower for a project in one go so what happens is if i am appointing 20% at one go throughout the project so those who are appointed for the testing they are getting halted due until and unless those appointed for the design is getting uh, is uh, finishing their work but here what happens is every module module a module b module c every module requires the design phase the testing phase the coding phase the uh, and all these phases so what happens is the persons involved in a all the 20 persons are involved in a again they can be involved in b and first when the design phase of a is complete that person can switch and start the design phase of b and when the testing of a is complete that person can switch and uh, start the testing of uh, b so what happens is a large manpower is saved with a smaller manpower also since the modules are created in incremental approach with a smaller manpower also this entire thing can be done okay so these two are the major advantages of this incremental development model and these two advantages was not there in the earlier other models if we aim at giving a product to the client which is which has the least error the client it they will become it will be beneficial for them 
and also if an organization can give the same output with a lesser number of manpower that means their cost will be less so again it is a great beneficial to the organization so as a whole the project becomes the project becomes beneficial to both the client and the organization who is developing so this is the first model which was seen that it is a very advantageous model in comparison to this classical waterfall iterative waterfall then there is a v model then there is prototyping model with respect to all these models this model is a great advantageous okay now the next model which we will study is evolutionary model Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. So, this evolutionary model, this model has many features of the incremental model. Suppose in case of incremental model, the software, it is developed over a number of increments and at each increment, a feature or a function is implemented and it is deployed at the client side. So the software which was getting, which we were getting as a byproduct of this incremental model, it is a successively refined and like uh, function enriched because few functions are there in A module, another few functions are added in B module, another few functions are added in C module. So like this, it, it is a function enriched until the full software we, we are getting in hand. So the principal idea behind this evolutionary model is somewhat similar to by the incremental model. And its concept can be understood from the name itself that is evolution so in the incremental model what happens is complete requirements are first developed and the srs document it is prepared but in contrast to that in the evolutionary model these requirements plan estimate solution they evolve over the iteration so what happens is Okay. So the concept is same. One minute. So the concept is same like like in incremental model also. Each and every iteration, new, new features were added here also. The thing or the model or the product, it will develop, it will evolve. But one basic difference is in the incremental model, the requirements or uh, whatever I will say, the um, requirements, the plan, the estimations, they are frozen in the first slot itself that is the requirement analysis and gathering phase it was done only once the requirements were frozen the requirements were fully de defined and after that only the development iterations will begin but here from the requirement and planning phase only and the estimation phase only 
everything is evolving but in the incremental model for the first time all the requirements the planning the estimations were done in the beginning and it was freezed and the development activities they were carried on in iterations but in evolutionary model the entire thing will be carried on in evolution or in iterations so such evolution it is a definitely a consistent like uh, with the like suppose if there is some unpredictable discovery or there is some changes that take place in the new product or something so they can always evolve they can always adapt with the new changes okay so even if it is an extension of the waterfall model or the extension of the increment model but evolutionary model incorporates a major shift in the idea or the widely suppose the all the adopted uh, life cycle models still did and in this recent life cycle develop model develop models they have changed a huge paradigm in the idea that this evolutionary software development process the concept is design a little build a little and test a little and deploy a little so the concept is Okay, so this is the concept. The concept is thora thora karke karenge. Ek saath saara chiz karna nikarne nahi jayenge. We will design a small part. We will build that part. We will test that part. We will deploy that part to our customer. If they are satisfied, fine. If they are not satisfied, then we will again rework. And then for the next model also, we will design that part, build that part, test that part, deploy that. Part. so each and every time we will evolve we will do the evolution step by step that after the requirements have been specified the design the build the test the deployment activities they all will be iterated so on incremental iterations they all will be done so if i need to draw the diagram to represent it better so now i will draw the diagram okay uh one thing okay so puja is there right so why are you so late in joining the classes so make sure from next time i am letting you in but if it is crossing 10 minutes i won't be letting anyone in being a student if you cannot join in time to a class then it's better you should not you should leave studying you should sit back at home and enjoy your vacation okay so let us first draw this thing
ओके सो आई एम नॉट ड्रॉइंग दी बॉक्सेस बिकॉज सिंस वी आई एम यूजिंग अ डिजिपेन इट विल नॉट बी एग्जैक्ट लाइक आई एम एबल सो दीज आर ऑल एनक्लोज इन बॉक्सेस ओके सो what is this first we get the specification then we identify which are the core models which are the non core models and we start developing it first we develop the core model then we uh, collect customer feedback and then we modify the requirements which are needed then we develop the next uh, feature and again with this we deliver this thing for customer uh, feedback so at each and every uh, step the new version or the next version of the software is added and it is delivered to the customer for checking so like this after several versions in incremental manner it is evolved and it is checked by the customer and finally we have the product in hand and when all the features are complete at this step when all the features are complete we give the product for maintenance for use and maintenance okay so this is the uh design approach or uh, if i would say the graphical uh, pictorial representation of how this evolutionary model is done so if i talk about the advantages the first advantage is from the customer point of view now each and every like the first block of customer before developing the whole product product we don't generally give it to all the customers right but we have a section of customer who we always test my product with so the first good thing is this customer they get a chance to experiment with this partially developed software before the complete requirements are developed so therefore it helps in understanding the requirements accurately it helps in processing the requirements of a customer with the help of the feedback obtained on delivery of the partial or the different versions of the software to the uh, customer so as a result what happens is the change requests after the delivery of this complete uh, software it gets reduced okay so the request to change the product entirely or major features after the final delivery it will be reduced because each and every version we are uh, offering or we are giving the uh, unfinished little little versions we are giving it to the customer they are checking they are testing they are using they are giving the feedback if they want some change requests they are saying we are incorporating those again we are delivering so what it will reduce work it will reduce this act which was happening that a major changes need to be done when finally delivered to the customer so this will help in reducing that feature and obviously since i am giving versions in incremental approach to the customer so handling this type of change request it is easier as long term plans are not made over here short term plans are made because if i am uh, giving module a they are saying okay giving module b they are saying okay giving module c they are saying not okay then i will identify that some problem is there in module c only and if i make module a b c d and then give it to the customer and they say a change is made i will have to first identify which module is creating the problem or after incorporation of which module the customer is not satisfied so obviously a large amount of rework is reduced so since change requirements are always smaller in comparison to the large request change request that may come at the end when i am producing or providing the software as a whole at one go to the customer so obviously handling the change requests it is better so the first advantage which we studied is what for first advantage is uh since feedback is there so 
it reduces the change requests after delivery of the entire system because at each and every step we are changing if change is coming from the customer and then again in addition to this handling the change requests they are always easier because we are using incremental approach okay so this is the entire concept about evolutionary model anyone has any problem in understanding is it clear to you someone please ask yes ma'am okay someone please write to your group to sudhir and deepak that they won't be allowed to enter because they start they wanted to enter after 20 minutes the lecture is happening so i won't be allowing any more i have done enough for the previous classes i won't be allowing that okay but if i only talk about advantages it is not true there are a few disadvantages also associated with this uh, evolutionary model the first disadvantage is this feature where i am saying that incremental parts will be uh, coded incrementally things will be done so what happens is for small projects maybe it is true for smaller projects i can divide it into separate separate modules and i can start working on that but for larger projects it may generally the scene is a lot of modules they are interbind with each other and so they are dependent on each other also so even if an expert uh, comes to divide it into incremental parts even if he is a uh, successful in doing that but for doing that a considerable effort is uh, needed to plan and to deliver the incremental deliveries so this incremental delivery it is uh, not good for large projects so this is one disadvantage and another is suppose at a time that design is done that design is done only for the current increment where this increment is done so each and every time again that uh, this design concept i have an entire design which i am planning in the first place itself and then each and every time with each and every successive increments i am again designing i am again implementing i am again designing i am again implementing so first of all it it is time consuming second thing is that if i constantly do that it may differ from the design which i first started with with the design that is uh, documented in the srs document so there can be a mismatch between the two things so again this designing issues it is a problem so these are the two basic disadvantages but these disadvantages are not so strong in comparison to the advantages they give okay so evolutionary model they are normally used for large projects where it is easier to find modules for incremental implementation okay so when the customer prefers to receive the product in increments so that he can start using the different features as and when they are delivered uh rather than waiting all the time for the full product to be developed and delivered so for those cases this uh, evolutionary model is helpful okay and uh another feature is 
for object oriented development for object oriented software development design object oriented software development design this evolutionary model comes of great help because here this is the uh, procedure uh, programming approach where we can divide our entire concept into several classes several methods several objects so for object oriented software development projects evolutionary model is very much uh, applicable because it is easy to partition the software into several standalone units in terms of the classes okay and classes they can be more or less uh, developed independently so for object oriented software development projects this evolutionary model comes into hand okay so this was the concept about evolutionary model is there anything uh, is there any problem in understanding till now is no, this concept clear okay first i will share with you yes ma'am Okay, so everyone, please mark your attendance. Do not share this with your friends who are not present in the class because I have got four to five people who are trying to uh, mark or you are trying to enter after uh, like two minutes back after thirty minutes of the class has passed. So do not please help them. because this is not helping this is ruining your friends life also So everyone has marked their attendance, right? Is there anyone who has not been able to mark his or her attendance? One one sec. So I will stop the share, and uh, if there is anyone left who has not been able to mark his or her attendance, you people write your name in the chat box. Those two to three people, I will give your attendance manually. Okay. So the next topic which we will learn is the RAD model. 
what is this rad model rapid application development model okay so this rad model uh, it was proposed in order to overcome the rigidities which was associated with the waterfall model the first rigidity or the major rigidity which was associated and which was needed to make a huge change is difficulty to accommodate any change requests from the customer so a few radical extensions to the waterfall model was proposed and this model it has the features of both prototyping and evolutionary model so it has the feature of both prototyping and evolutionary model okay so in case of evolutionary model it has a similarity that it delivers it follows the evolutionary delivery model to obtain and to incorporate the customer feedbacks on the different incrementally delivered versions the different customer feedbacks are incorporated so this portion of the evolutionary model where i can have feedback from the customer and i can incorporate those feedbacks in incremental versions of the software this feature of the evolutionary model it too and in case of prototyping model this model had the uh mixture of pro making the prototype so prototypes are constructed and incrementally the features are developed and delivered to the customer but unlike the prototype model what used to happen can anyone say once in prototyping model we were developing the prototype we were giving it to the customer and after the customer has said okay or not what we were doing with the prototype anyone please what we were doing with the prototype we were keeping the prototype or we were throwing away the prototype ma'am throwing away the prototype throwing away the prototype so in case of prototype model what used to happen is prototype is thrown away right but that feature in rad model is not there so from the prototype model it only took the feature that prototype can be made prototype should be made and from the evolutionary model it took the feature that incrementally the feature will the, the functions will be developed and it will be delivered for feedback to the customer and if the customer gives any uh, change request we will incorporate those and incremental versions we will again be delivering so one feature of prototyping and another feature of evolutionary both it took the good features of both the models it took and it developed a rad model okay so remember this in prototyping model after the prototype have been created and tested it is thrown away but this feature is not taken in rad model in rad model the prototype is kept because prototype itself is changing with incrementally incrementally after adding a few features the prototype is changing okay now this gives us a few uh goals of this rad model the major goals of this rad model okay the first 
goal is obviously it will decrease the time taken and the cost incurred in order to develop the entire software it will decrease the time and cost in order to develop the software the second goal is like these are the goals goals mean this rad model aimed at to decrease the time and to decrease the cost which was taken in order to develop the software so these were the goals for building this rad model the second goal was to limit the cost of uh limit this cost of uh, like uh, accommodating the change requests so with a, each and every change request needs to be incorporated a cost is associated so this model aimed at reducing the cost which was associated in accommodating the change requests which was coming from the feedback and the, the next goal is to reduce the communication gap between the customer and the developer reduce the communication gap between the customer and the developer so each and every step the developer used to give the partially made product to the customer the customer used to check he used to give feedback then again he used to give the partially made product so